Okay, let's look at another correlation. If we were to go to Phoenix, we could measure the number of ice cream sales made per month by ice cream vendors. And we could also um, measure the number of snake bites that were reported to the Poison Control Center every month. And we might find something that looks like this. Uh, this is, of course, made up data. Uh, but as a uh, number of, of ice cream cells go up, snake bites per month go up. Uh, so this is clearly, they're going in the same direction. So this is clearly a very nice, strong, positive correlation, not very uh, messy at all. I, if you looked at this data in reality, you might get a positive correlation, but it probably wouldn't be this clean. But just to, to make the point, uh, let's suppose we find this very, very clean, uh, clear correlation. So there's two questions. Is there a correlation between ice cream sales and snake bites? And well, I just told you there is. The answer is obviously yes. So that's something I might ask you on a test. I might show you this picture and say, is there a correlation? Uh, there's a correlation. Is it negative or positive? Well, yeah, it's positive because they're going in the same direction. Okay. Uh, the next question I have is, do ice cream sales cause snake bites? Does going and buying an ice cream make you more likely to be bitten by a snake? Does it cause the snake to come over and bite you? And the answer here is obviously no. And that's why I've made it a ridiculous example to make the to make it very clear that that is not the case. Um, this will not always be this obvious. Uh, sometimes you won't be able to tell by looking at the variables. The point is, you can't know. The, the principle that this demonstrates is something that they drill into your head in research methods classes, which is that correlation does not imply causation. In other words, if you have a correlation between two things, the one might be causing the other. I mean, even here, it is possible that buying an ice cream causes you to get bitten by a snake, although that's quite ridiculous. Um, but it does not mean that, it, so it's possible when there's a correlation that the one thing is causing the other, but you don't know. That's what they mean by it does not imply causation. It could be that the one thing is causing the other, but you don't know if that's the case. You have to do additional work to find out. Let's look at this in a little bit of a different way. What we're asking here is, do snake bites cause ice cream sales? And we, and we imply causation by using this arrow, okay? Well, what are, what's another possibility? Well, snake bites could cause ice cream sales, ice cream sales could cause snake bites, or really more likely than any of these ridiculous examples is what? That there's a third variable involved, and that's just the time of year, the summer. That summer, as it gets hotter outside, makes the snakes come out, and summer, as it gets hotter outside, makes people buy ice creams and also makes people go hiking. And so because people are out in the heat in the summer hiking, they're more likely to get bit by snakes and they're more likely to buy ice cream. So snake bites and ice cream sales are absolutely related. That's very true. There might even be a, a strong relationship or even a perfect relationship between two things. But that doesn't mean that the relationship has to be a direct relationship. It can be a relationship that is caused by a third variable. When we have a third variable like this, the, the other term for it, other than just sometimes call, being called a third variable, is we would call it a confounding variable. The word confounding meaning mixed up, things that are mixed up together. You can't disentangle the effects of the one thing versus the other, okay? Uh, the definition I would give you is a confounding variable is an unaccounted for variable, something you haven't looked at, something you haven't measured, and it's a variable that could be influenced in the relationship being studied. So we never account for everything, at least we don't have to in a study, as long as we've accounted for everything that's reasonable, okay? So if there's something that is just insanely unlikely to be influencing what you're studying, then you probably don't need to worry about it. But if there's something like summer that you haven't measured or taken into account and it's not on your graph and you haven't thought about it, and you're drawing this connection between snake bites and ice cream sales and saying, uh, ice cream sales cause snake bites or whatever it is that you're claiming in terms of causation, um, then that's an unfounded, invalid conclusion that you're making, okay? Because again, correlation does not imply causation. So again, I have given you a, a simple and intentionally ridiculous example so that it's obvious that the one thing isn't causing the other, but that the relationship's being caused by a third or confounding variable. But when you see this kind of thing out there in the real world, it's almost never uh, this obvious. And it's very easy to slip, slip it by us. We, we often see correlational studies reported in the news, but, but reporters don't tend to point out that they're correlational studies. And so we have a natural tendency as human beings 
to see a correlation and jump to the conclusion that it's a causal relationship and that we know what is causing what. So as an example, this is an article that was sent to, uh, to me by a friend of mine. Uh, it says, vegetarians less healthy, lower quality of life than meat eaters. Now from this title, the natural assumption that you tend to make if you're not thinking about it or you don't know about this, is, is that vegetarianism is causing people to be less healthy. Now we as scientists don't uh, have a very, very good understanding of diet, um, but so, so that is a possibility. But the, the uh, research that this journalist is reporting on doesn't actually provide that information. We don't know from this research what the nature of the relationship is. We just know that in this particular case that the people they looked at in this particular study, uh, the, the, there was a relationship where vegetarian diet was correlated with poorer health outcomes. Okay, but to see what's really going on here, let's trace it back to the original peer-reviewed journal article. It doesn't hurt to actually see what one of these looks like anyway. So the first thing you'll notice about a peer-reviewed journal article is it's a lot drier than, than, uh, than popular uh, news items, um, has a lot more information in it. The, the idea is that we, uh, in a peer-reviewed journal article, you're really uh, emphasizing the uh, accuracy and 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 being specific and provi and providing all of the information that a person might need to evaluate your study rather than trying to sell it or market it or or get popular readership um, which is good and bad because it, it gives you a lot of information it really lets you see what's going on um, kind of is a good way to settle a lot of arguments if you're if if it's not clear from the popular article what's going on um, but the downside is it can be kind of tough to work through some of these sometimes because they kind of tend to put you to sleep. Um, but just look at the title here, the association between eating behavior and various health parameters. Um, that right there tells you association. They're just looking for a, a correlation, a relationship between variables. And, and you can see that again, if you look right here, they say our results showed that a vegetarian diet is associated with poorer health. So they're not saying that a vegetarian diet causes poor health, they're just saying it's associated. But again, our brains naturally tend to jump to the conclusion that the one thing is causing the other. Now this is a very interesting and kind of curious result. Why would this be the case? And it needs to be followed up on and we need certain types of studies that would show that one causes the other, but this study does not do it by itself. And we can see this again if we jump to the end of the article. And in the end of an article, you'll usually see this discussion section where the scientists are free to, to, uh, to talk a little more openly about the results and, and sort of speculate on what the results might mean. And they often in this section include a discussion of potential limitations of the studies, basically pointing out things that the, that the study does not say. And journalists uh, far too often kind of skip over this section and do not report or do not emphasize what it is that the study does not say so that readers are clear on that. So right here they say at the very beginning of this section on limitations, they say um, potential limitations of our results are due to the fact that the survey was based on cross-sectional data. What this means is they looked at the people at one moment of time. They didn't track people over the course of their lives or even the course of, of, a, of a single month. They just basically asked them in, in, at one sitting, um, you know, are you a vegetarian and how healthy are you? And, and when you do that, they say no statements can be made whether the poor health in vegetarians in our study is caused by their dietary habit, in other words, by being vegetarians, or if they consume this form of diet due to their poor health status. In other words, we don't know whether uh, having a, a, a vegetarian diet causes poor health or whether having poor health causes a vegetarian diet. Uh, we cannot state whether a causal relationship exists. In other words, they're saying we can't even say if, if either of these things causes the other, or again, if there's something else uh, that, that might be causing both of them, just like with this uh, snake bites and ice cream. They say, but we describe ascertained associations. So they are spelling it out for you here that they are just talking about a correlation. And they even wrap this up by saying, you know, overall, we feel that our results are of interest and contribute to scientific knowledge notwithstanding some limitations regarding causes and effects. So they are, again, spelling it out, putting a big red sign on their article that says, this should not be interpreted as the one thing causing the other. We should not, we can speculate about that and we wanna follow up on this to see if that's the case, um, but we cannot draw any conclusions about it so far. So uh, kind of the take home message here is a lot of the times when these things are reported in the news, 
the news articles aren't really saying anything. The news articles are saying some scientists found a relationship, but they don't really know what it means. Well, that's pretty interesting, but we really need to wait on, on the science to follow up on it to say what's causing what.